Welcome to Independent Lifestyles, sponsored by the Sheboygan County Aging and Disability Resource Center. We present programs that direct you to resources to maintain health and independence in our community. I'm Christine Jeske, an outreach worker at the Aging and Disability Resource Center, and I'm your host for today. Our guests are Lisa Rader and Ed Gilligan of Fountain Park United Methodist Church. Lisa and Ed will be telling us about the Love, Na Love Your Neighborhood program of Sheboygan County. Hi, everybody. Hi, Hi. Christine. <laughs> so Lisa, will you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm from Sheboygan County my whole life. I am married for 30 years, and I have two grown sons and a miniature wiener dog, Oliver. <laughs> and Ed, thanks for coming as well. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, I'm also from Sheboygan County most of my life. Uh, I've moved a couple areas and came back. My wife, uh, Suzanne, of 21 years now, and I have a, a lovely, uh, a handsome stepson and a, a granddaughter, Aww. and I also have two lovely daughters as well, nice. and a nice English Springer Spaniel pup. Oh, what's it say? <laughs> uh, Briar, and oh. she's just getting trained. She's very young, four, four months old. So. Wow, it's a lot of work. <laughs> yes, yes it's it is. a lot of work. So, who is Fountain Park and what are you doing for our community? Who would like to start? Anybody? I'll let's let you go, Lisa. Your butt's blue. Um, Fountain Park, we have been in Sheboygan County, or the city of Sheboygan, for I don't even know how long. But uh, we have sponsored, we have partnered with um, group mission trips from Colorado. and. With group, we are working, we're working alongside them to organize a youth home repair work camp. It will be the week of June 21st to the 27th for Sheboygan County residents who, with physical or financial need. Um, and this is all at a minimal or no cost to the resident and um, volunteer labor. Nice, the, nice. The kids come in uh, from all over the United States to uh, group missions organizes this and they'll come in from all over the United States and they usually have to generate some money um, roughly about five hundred dollars each uh, through um, doing things at their church uh, to raise funds to go on this um, so the kids are kind of committed to this job when they come it's not that you have a lot of kids just uh, you know, coming just for the fun of getting away. They're actually very committed. And, and in the years that I've gone, um, about six years now, uh, when you go on mission trips, it's just really exciting to see the kids uh, get busted into groups and work um, individually. Like they, they are, there's 400 kids coming to Horse Man, and the 400 kids that are coming are um, going to be uh, into individual groups of five or six people. Sorry if I'm talking a little too much. <laughs> That comes a later. So can you kind of tell us a little bit about the group work camp again and a little slower? That would be awesome. Okay. Uh, well, group mission trips, they've been around since the early 90s. Um, they work with communities across the country and the world, and they are a mission organization, a mission ministry of group cares. Um, they've been doing meaningful service and community programs, and... They have also, I mean, they have worked with thousands, they've done thousands of these trips and racked up millions of volunteer hours across the, uh, around the world. And we just serve people in need. That's wonderful. And it's very Christ-centered. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Um, very nice. Uh, they have a strong belief also in providing teenagers to encounter Jesus through serving others, either in their ba own backyard or around the world. Nice. Nice. And what are the ages of the youth that are involved? Um, really about 12 to 19. The ones coming to Sheboygan here are 12 to 19 um, years old, but group does do other age groups as well. Um, they have a, a younger youth camp and an older youth camp of high schoolers as well. So like middle school to high school? Yeah. This is a middle and high school camp. Yeah. Okay. And they do this all on their own? Well, with their youth groups right. from yeah. their church, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how did our community get in, you know, involved with this work camp? Well, we've been doing this. I've personally started in 2005. 
Um, I think our church has got, done a few of these before that. Mm -hmm. And Ed's kids have um, been doing this for, what, five, six years? Yep. And, and you have one that's I, aged out of the youth group yep. already, but she still stays very involved. Yeah, she's, uh, she's also helping out in ways where she can uh, on this as well. And my youngest daughter is also very instrumental. I kind of drag them along, <laughs> but they're, they're very instrumental in helping out with this as well. So I can imagine, and um, they meet these people, and they start working for them. And I bet you they become some become close to them, and they kind of build a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. I think that's so meaningful. And then, do they do these relationships that sometimes carry forward? Do they exchange emails, or do you know any that ever happen? They exchange a lot of social media. Yeah. And um, my my oldest will be thirty, and I know he still stays in touch with a few people. Isn't and it? he aged out pretty much at the age of eighteen. He went in the army after high school and he he still stays in touch with a few people yeah. so and that's what kind of got us fired up about doing it every time we'd come home we'd be talking about we really need to do this in our own in our own area because so often we hear from people why don't you stay in your own backyard and do this there's people that need help here True. and we finally just said let's check into it and is that when the two of you got involved together we started checking into it about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. It takes a good year and a half to two years to plan one of these. To get it up The and first running. time yeah. especially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's a big learning curve. There's a, there's a lot to learn in organizing it. I can't imagine. I mean, it's a year for five days, right? Right. right. Or six days, yeah. But there's a lot of behind the scenes for us and for uh -huh. group. Well, group. And, and if you're going to build a wheelchair ramp for somebody, you have to meet the building codes. So we had to talk to all 28 communities uh, and their building inspectors to make sure that, you know, we're going to be meeting the codes that they need and that they're okay with this. Yeah. Good, good. And could you tell me, either one of you, what does a typical work camp look like? It usually consists of three to 400 youth participants and their adult chaperones. So they come here, three to 400 of them. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, our camp is currently at 406 participants. We, they have stopped accepting people and they are wait listing people. So if anybody drops off, they already have people to replace them, unless they've already signed up somewhere else. But um, yeah, and these people, it represents about 1,200 volunteer work hours for the community. Um, in those seven, seven days? In those yeah. five days, five days. yeah. Um, and right now we have, from our 406 people, it represents 10 different states from Oklahoma to South Carolina and a lot in the Midwest. Um, so do the children or the young adults, young teenagers in our community also help or do they go to a different mission and work? We have, we have one church in our community that is signed up with 30 people. 30 some people. Um, they just wanted to stay in their own backyard this year and just show the need that there is in our own community. Because mm -hmm. so often we just, we don't see it. We don't see it until it's right in front of our face. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. And I, I know there's also, um, I believe Versine does this every year, or Kenosha uh, does it every year through group missions and so does uh, Green Bay's doing it the second year. They did it last year and again, they're doing it this year. So this is our first year since it was here once before in 2006, I believe. I'm sure every year it just gets bigger. I, you know, can only imagine. So does it, is there a cost or anything for the children or how does this all work for the work camp? There is a fee of about, <clears throat> excuse me, $470 <clears throat> for each participant. That covers the cost of food and the lodging, um, also the programming that, that is done in, during the week. And then they also have a paid staff of about six that are on site, but then there's many in the background that help organize this. Um, we personally are all, and about $30 of each participant money goes to actual materials. We then are responsible for raising $20,000, which we have pretty much reached. We've pretty much reached our goal. And those donations came from First Congregational Service Grant 
Johnsonville and our own United Methodist Foundation. Mm -hmm. And then we have many individual donations that we've had also. So we want to thank those who have donated also. Yeah. So these kids pay 470 to come to this camp mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for a week to do work, and that includes their stay and everything, correct? Right. right. Okay. Um, how do the adults get chosen, chosen for the, the youth group? <laughs> Usually, oftentimes, um, in my past history, uh, my daughters were going, and I just wanted to be part of what they were doing and learn more what they were doing. So um, as a member of the youth group uh, at our church, I tried to um, encourage the other kids to go as well, and, and we all went. Uh, we have a young boy uh, that goes quite often, and um, his mother doesn't have anybody, so it's kind of helpful that way. Um, they don't have a, she doesn't have a male counterpart to go uh -huh. sometimes. So grandpa has also gone a Wonderful. couple times, but yeah. it's something to help out that way too. I said some kids, when we've gone on these mission trips, um, they get to see things they don't normally get to see. Um, we've gone to Washington DC on back from one of our mission trips and just allowed the kids to see the White House, uh, the Lincoln um, Memorial, things like that that they may not have gotten to see right. ever in their lifetime. Right. So. That's right. Yeah. I apologize. I didn't really answer how I got. That's how I got involved. Those through that's my kids. Okay. So. But that's what happens. And yeah. then we've had our pastor go along. We've had yep. other members who don't even have kids. Yeah. In the youth group that they want to go. Right? We've had a year where we had, I think, twice as many adults as we've had youth. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good, though, right? Just yeah. because we're still on fire for it. If well, you know it. when you go and see these kids and they light up <clears throat> when they're yeah. they're able to do something. Uh, one boy, it was just a matter of showing him how to use a drill and run screws into a board for a deck so that he was prepping the boards and getting them all ready. But it was something that for him was really a value. He had never done that before, never experienced it, and you could see the, his face just light up with excitement. And I says, that's what I enjoy about it. It's good for their soul yeah. Yeah. to see that they can make a difference. And I'll tell you the other thing that I learned when I go on these mission trips when you sit down with devotions and see these kids discuss devotions, their, their commitment to Christ is amazing. Uh, we watch a lot of stuff on media that kind of makes me nervous about how we're doing. And when you see these kids, it really enlightens you and makes you feel like we have a positive future. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. Good. I also want to add to that is the grandpa that went the one time, he wrote the most beautiful letter when he came home and said he just wishes the world could see this in our young people. Yeah. Instead of just seeing so much of the negative, right. so much yeah. of the negative all the time. Yeah. yeah, that's true, and it doesn't. It's not as advertised either, right? You know, because that costs money. Well, to, then that doesn't bring right. in big numbers right. of people watching yeah. you. <laughs> right, right. Um, what type of projects? We will do repairing and new builds of wheelchair ramps and porches, um, interior exterior painting. Um, skirting on mobile homes and like the rubber roof coatings we will do. Um, a lot of weatherizing. There's a lot of little things we will do that do we don't list. Do you clean their houses? Sometimes. If like those interior, are considered interior that's painting, an, you end up moving yeah, everything around. Yeah, you do end around. up moving so kinda, everything yeah. around. Uh -huh. But it's yeah. also kind of Mm -hmm. rainy day projects yeah. that if people need help with something, I mean, sometimes people have just asked if we could help rearrange their living room so they can clean it. You know, if you have a rainy day, you know, there's other things that can be done. Going back to um, how you choose the, um, the adult volunteers, is there a background check that you do? Yeah, yeah, there, yeah we do background checks mm -hmm. on all the volunteers that go. Even, yeah. if youth, <clears throat> even if a youth is 18, they have to have a background check. So anybody 18 and older. So who's ever along is all good people. Yep. I hope so. Yep. <laughs> and, and I believe we do, we do background checks on the people, and I correct me if I'm wrong, but on the people that, that the work sites yes. that we're going to be working at, yes. too. Yes, the residents uh, we don't all wanna, have a background check. Yeah, we don't want to send the kids into an area that ah. could be uh, potentially. potentially dangerous. Yeah. 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 And, I, and communities have been, uh, one of my first ones was not a work camp, but it was a, a week of hope. And um, in that situation, we were just helping out at a park, uh, letting kids play for the summer. They came to the, but there was also a police officer there just to just keep to an eye sure. on things. And yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was very interesting and very informative. Um, some of the kids coming to the park, you know, I mean, that was, they were as 
just barely toddlers to adult teens. And keeping all them kids active, that was a challenge as well. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I think I was more exhausted after those days than I was after the work camps. <laughs> yeah, because at work, when they're at the camps, they're working, so they're yeah. occupied. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 That's good. And um, how many residents do you help in the five days? We're doing, what is it, 60 to 70? 60 to 70. Yeah, so how many groups do you have then that go to each? Um, that's difficult to answer. And the reason okay. I say that is, la I'm going to just give an example of last year. Of last year we were in Green Bay and we were painting a home at my work site. And the work site we were at was a two-story home um, and we were painting the whole outside. Uh, so you have a kid holding a ladder for either an adult or a kid that's up on top. And, and you're painting. So that's two people right there. So if you have a crew of five to six, yeah, yeah. you know, it starts. To, and then what happens is towards the end of the week, you may be struggling to get that project done because of all the up and down and, and scraping and everything needs to be done. So other groups will show up to help you out. Uh, and a lot of times uh, my site in Green Bay was uh, the 39th site to be completed out of 42. Um, so we don't want to leave the resident with an uncompleted site. Uh, you know, we want to be able to make sure they're done as much as possible. So now did I hear you say you had 39? 39 and, completed, and, and I think there's 42 all together. sites. Nice. So and us on a local level have to finish them. Yeah. So. Okay. Even if the kids, even if their time is up? Yeah, well, yeah. their time is up, they go home. They go uh, home. And, and we don't want to leave the residents sitting, you know, Anything stranded. that gets started has to be finished. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yep. And depending on weather, right? Yep. Right. So let's pray for a good yes, week. Yes, <laughs> we want good weather that week. <laughs> and how do you get residents who need the help? They go through an application process. It um, began this last October. We just closed it as of February 20th. Um, it's for owner-occupied homes. And they have to have, again, a physical or financial need. Um, and then we have on our steering, our steering organizing committee at our, that we have organized is somebody, a few people look at them and then a phone call is made. And this past weekend, we had four members of group work camps come to Sheboygan and we looked at all of the tentative 93 sites that we have picked out. So we'll know in about another month or mm -hmm. so who will mm -hmm. actually be um, getting work done on their home. So tell me, what do you mean by a steering committee? A steering committee is our organizing committee. Uh -huh. We've got about 16 to 20 members, I guess, right now. Are these all adults? Are they young? Yeah, these are mostly adults. Yeah. Um, your daughters My have been. My oldest daughter does come help out once yeah. in a while. So she's, she's an adult, but she's a young adult. <laughs> she's a young adult. We have a few young adults. Yes. <laughs> So once the application is filled out, you give them a call, you go to their house, and you look at the project yep. that's needed. We look at the projects, um, decide what we really can and cannot do, and then um, the people that came from group work camps, they will decide. They don't really have the final, final say, but they are trying to budget based on money that we have and the materials that we need. Mm -hmm. so we've kind of, we're probably got about two thirds that are mostly painting and then we have a few other bigger projects that we're doing. So everything is timed out? Everything is timed mm -hmm. out. Everything's figured out monetarily. So hopefully we stay within our budget, so. And is a work day eight hours or is it 15 hours? Or it depends on the job? It's about 8.30 to 3, 3.30. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. There's a lunch time in there too. Sometimes people get those done really fast because you have to, you know, they also want you to do a devotion with your, your six person crew. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. I, I think that's another thing that's very important. Uh, you know, these kids are coming based uh, with a Christ, Christian ethic and to have that devotion time and make sure that that devotion time is there because it's one of the things I always, it's, I kind of preach to them, but I says, as an adult, you get busy in life and you sometimes don't have the time to open up that Bible and take a look at it. And I or think you that's, can, yeah. that's sad because we get too busy, you know, right. and I says, showing them that, yeah, we're, gonna, we're working today, we need to get this project done, but we also need to take time to just review and, and do a little bit of a devotion. Kind I think of get them critical. centered for yeah. why they're there and yeah. the meaning of it. Yeah. And, yeah. That's really great. 
That's wonderful. Um, and you finalize all the applications by when? Usually, so when do the people know that, yep, we're coming and... Usually by May. I'm not going to say it for sure because I'm going to say May. By the end of May, for sure, we should know. Because some of these people are working with violations on their homes and they're working with the city. The city did give us um, a great opportunity and they gave them an opportunity that if they are working with us, that uh, they'll extend their violation period. That's like wonderful. Their deadlines on their violations. So yeah. It's great when everybody works together, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the city's really been wonderful with that. That's wonderful with that. to yeah. hear. I was on a mission trip a few years ago where the woman was about seven days away from losing her home. And when we came in and did everything, she was so pleased. By the end of it, we had a little extra time, so we painted an uh, attic upstairs for her. And she says because of that, she may be even able to have her grandchild come back and move back in with her. Wow. So it went from almost losing everything to having your grandchild be able to move back in with you. Wow. So I mean, that's, that's what's great about stories. this. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you see a lot, and you got some really good stories to share. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and are the people when you go meet them, are they intimidated? Are they um, willing to allow you to come in? Do they want this? I would think mm -hmm. most do. You find a few that afterwards just I think it intimidates them. And oh, um, since we've done the weekend, I have had a few phone calls where they backed out, and you know I've tried to convince them talk to them yeah. and ask you know where that problem may lie and some it's just because they have to take the entire week if they have to take the week off of work because they're supposed to yeah. be there while the workers are at their home and they have to be there well they have to have someone there. they have to have someone have there to, it doesn't yeah. have to be them but they have to have someone there and for some people that's a difficult problem um, and and you don't want to take them away from work either but you know it's it's you can be there to help them out if they can work with you and somehow find somebody to you know be there for you, mm -hmm. and that person has to also go through background check, so you know whoever's staying at the home, you know that there's not a person that's not been checked over. So, what is your biggest project this year for this? I think a 32-foot wheelchair ramp. There might be a 40 something. Okay, I know there was one that we've been working on and. Uh, um, I know I sent the information back to the group people that were here because we were looking at, um, because of the, the standards, um, we thought that it was five foot landing and it's actually a three foot landing. And the room was very close uh, as to how much room we had to put, we have to go back and forth three times. So it'll end up being very close to the sidewalk. Um, it's gonna take up pretty much the front yard. Um, so yeah, that one's gonna be a challenge. Yeah. So these helpers that help you, they must have experience. Are some of them carpenters or plumbers or electricians or, it, you know, because a lot of times as you learn as you go are just as well as the professionals. And I get that. Yeah, you, I've been very blessed on my mission trips. Um, there's always been somebody that has some carpentry experience. I can paint, but uh, beyond that, I wouldn't say I'm, <laughs> I'm a very good carpenter. I says, but because I'm able to learn uh, through some of the other people that are there, that's another thing that's just amazing. As an adult, I'm learning things every time. And I says, it's, it's nice for me as well. Um, as a matter of fact, the last week I was talking to somebody and we had so many projects at the house. He says, you work on the painting and they were doing some stuff with a uh, deck in the front and I wanted to learn it and he understood that. He says, we'll get together some other time. <laughs> I'll make sure you and I work together. So it, yeah, you make those friendships along the way. Yeah, so. that's wonderful, that's wonderful. So tell me a little bit about what the week will look like for the workers in the camp. Well, on Sunday they'll arrive. Um, they get checked into a classroom at, they're staying at Horseman, um, they, where they sleep on the floors. And they eat in the cafeteria, mm -hmm. they shower in the locker rooms, and then they'll have dinner. Um, They'll meet crews that evening, um, and that's their, their five other people that they'll go out with on the work site uh -huh. all week. Let's go back to when you said, you know, with the meals and stuff, mm -hmm. who cooks those and who prepares they those? They do keep um, some of the school staff on. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, and they are paid their regular wage. And also janitorial staff stays on 
and they get paid their regular wage during the through week. Through their employee? Through, well, group, the money that, like, we pay group work camps and that the participants pay group work camps. Um, the school then keeps track of the, or they keep track of the hours that they work and they will get paid from group work camps. And group work camps will bring in the food so that part of it is the actual food is brought in by group work camps. Um, yeah. They purchase there's that a, as well. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. a, a menu that's mm -hmm. pretty much for each work camp during the summer. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned something about that there's showers there, so every day they shower yep. and... There's shower times and they, they do differentiate. It's 18 and below have certain shower times and then adults have other shower mm -hmm. times mm -hmm. just because you... Mm -hmm still don't want to be having adults showering with young people. And, and I think it's another thing that's just outstanding, but if you think about it, when we went on these mission trips and you sleep in a high school floor on an air mattress and get up and put in an eight hour day at work and then come back, take a shower, and, and that's gonna be your place to sleep. These kids are impressive that way to me because I says that's something that, uh, you know, it ain't that you're going home and laying in a nice bed. You're, yeah, you're, but kids can handle that, Yeah, right? they can, but us adults also have to do that too. It's so not really. Yes. It's uh, not five star. Yeah. No, yeah, we sleep with we, we sleep, sleep on the classroom floors also. So you don't yep. get to go home and sleep. Nope. And even the paid staff sleeps on a yep. floor. So three minutes. Okay. Okay, so tell me about what time they wake up and... They wakey Usually wakey. About, yeah, wakey, <laughs> about 6:45 is the wakey wakey song, and they have sort of a thing they play over the uh, PA Inner that cow. gets gets everybody going. And then they'll have uh, breakfast, um, usually about 7, seven to seven forty-five. Seven thirty, seven forty-five. Yeah. yeah, and then um, they'll be, after that they have program. They have like a morning program, and then they'll go off to work at about 8:30 and come back at about 3:30 on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Now Wednesday, they have like what's called a half day. So uh, after the 8.30 program, they go out and they work till noon. Then they come back and their youth groups will go out in the community and see things that um, draw their interest, um, mm -hmm. whether it be golfing or um, windsurfing was somebody had listed, yeah. uh, you know, just different things that the kids do, enjoy to do. And then they'll come back and there'll be an evening program that night. And this is on only on Wednesday, but there'll be an evening uh, program that night as well and most people make it back by that time to go. That sounds like a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's a busy day. Yeah, yeah. And um, are there any other ways that the community can offer support? Um, the week before camp, we have a setup week, and we will need help. We'll, we do need some help with some of that. We mm -hmm. will be delivering ladders, and materials to each site that week. Along with that, um, we also need ladders yeah. donate uh, to be to that be we can donated. borrow. Yeah. They will get them back. We'll borrow. We need ladders to borrow. Um, they can be of various heights: step ladders, extension ladders. So, can um, people donate money, snacks, cookies? Yep, we have. Yep. A, we do. We are in need of snacks for the youth during the week after they come back. Um, we can always use, we're not going to turn down any money that's donated uh -huh. either. And can um, they drop it off at Horse Man or do they call, contact they the They would church? actually contact um, the number that was up on the, the number that was okay. up or the email okay. that was up there. Mm -hmm. You can contact and we will get you. You can also, if you wanted to send a donation, of course, it's 828 Erie Avenue also. Okay. Um, that's Fountain Park's address. So It sounds like a fun day, but I wouldn't want to sleep. On the ground. <laughs> well, you don't have to. You can bring. I know, an air but mattress. still, I mean, yeah. that's a lot. We've picked yeah. on one of our adult women because she brought one of those super high air mattresses. The rest of us were practically on the ground, <laughs> and we called her princess all week. And yeah, you know, we have fun, you know. And the kids get the camaraderie yes. of yeah. each another. Yes, and, and they, they're and they're resident. They really yeah. they love getting to know the resident. Also, good. I would like to thank our guests, Lisa. Raider and Ed Gilligan for sharing with us how important it is to help one another and to our audience. Thank you for turning, tuning into our show. Please join us next month for another interesting topic on maintaining your health and independence. Thank you.